Hey, what's up everybody? This is Steve and Robot. We're here at uh, Vespa Motorsport, also known as Scooter West. Uh, we're gonna be talking about an extremely customized 2013 GTV in Sienna Ivory. Uh, we've got a lucky customer that walked into the showroom and said, hey, I wanna buy that bike. I want a bunch of chrome stuff on it. I want a bunch of electrical stuff on it. Do everything you possibly can to make this bike unique and stand alone and like no other out there. And I think we've done that. What would you say, Robot? Yeah, Couple pretty times. much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to talk about the various uh, upgrades we've done on this bike. We're going to do it in several different sections. We're going to talk first about the bolt-on chrome stuff. Um, starting at the rear of the scooter, you notice it's got the uh, rear Piaggio bars. The part number on this is GTS 12 PA. That's part number GTS 12 PA, but they mount on the underside there. They protect the rear back half of the scooter. They also offer good protection for the taillight. You can kind of see back here. And you see how they come all the way up and they basically mount to the lower, uh, they basically mount directly to the frame. So they're extremely sturdy and offer a good amount of uh, added security for the scooter. Also back here, you'll notice we sell this set of three uh, chrome button head fasteners. Uh, anybody that's got a GTV knows that it's got those ugly black fasteners that are pretty prone to rusting. So we sell these nice chrome ones that replace that. It's a set of three. So there's one, two, and there's actually a third one below the uh, license plate there. So again, sticking to the various like chrome bolt-on stuff, uh, Robot has done a good job sourcing a special set of uh, button head chrome fasteners that fit around the belt cover. Uh, that's a brand new item. The part number on that is 289731C. So that part number is 289731C. Uh, that's pretty cool. So it makes it so you can replace those fasteners with these really, really decorative chrome ones. Another standard bolt-on item we offer is this uh, chrome side stand. Part number on that one is uh, GT10 PC. There's four different versions of side stands for the uh, Vespas, two in chrome, two in black. Um, panning here towards the front, we've got the bigger bar end weights. How much bigger are those than the regular ones, Robot? I think they're about twice the weight and you can buy them as a optional accessory or when you buy a top case kit, the factory top case kit includes the larger uh, bar and weights to kind of minimize some of the vibration on the front end. Also up front on the handlebars, you notice this individual went for the uh, chrome control levers. That's another exclusive that we offer at uh, Scooter West Vespa Motorsport. You probably, anybody that has a GTV, this should stand out to you. We've got these very decorative chrome caps that cover the master cylinders. Um, will those fit on anything, Robot? Any GTV or? Yeah, we sell a kit that will fit on any of the GTVs that are prior to 2013. 2013 comes with those uh, covers that cover up the black master cylinders found on, on this year and later. Uh, any of the earlier ones, they had aluminum uh, master cylinders that were clear coated and they were prone to um, get moisture between the clear coat and aluminum. They look pretty ugly and sometimes in less than a year's time. Uh, we sell a kit that includes two of the decorative covers includes a special pair of mirrors. And then there's also two spacers that actually go between the cover and the mirror. Uh, pretty simple install. And I don't have the part number offhand. Neither do I, but it's on our website. It's a yep. group of those mm -hmm. items like Robot just said. Uh, but it basically makes it so you can install these covers on any GTV, whether it be a 2006, six, six GT, through 12, GT60 basically. all the way up to 2012. The next thing that really stands out on the front of this bike in particular, uh, you'll notice there's a protective leg shield bar. Uh, Faco is really the first company to develop such a thing. Uh, there was a German company that made one several years ago, but the fitment was absolutely atrocious, so we uh, ceased carrying them. But you notice the Faco bar runs from the very top all the way down, um, and it mounts to the uh, undercarriage of the frame. One thing to point out here is the upper mounting point is shared via the special tab that's welded on this front Faco rack. So there's these two parts are sold individually. It's a GT11F and GT13F01, but basically you would need to go for this rack and the bars as two separate items in order to get them to work. But this is a brand new item. This is the first time we've ever actually installed one. So how did the installation go on this robot? Real easy install. Uh, pretty much put the rack on first. Uh, the trickiest part is this little strap that actually, you know, hooks right in that pocket where the uh, fender goes up into. Then you need to torque these two strut bars enough to get the clearance between this bar and, and the fender. Um, and there's also a, a extra nut that locks it up and real sturdy, 
install. Sometimes you need to turn the little rubber, rubber pucks to get them to line up perfectly. And then the bars go on pretty straightforward. There's a bracket that actually bolts to the underside of the frame. And you need to pop out one of the rubber frame plugs to install that little bracket. And then the, the bars are actually two pieces and they bolt to the, the bottom bracket and then to the rack itself, as Steve pointed out earlier. So. And, and again, just like uh, most of the accessories, no drilling. So these are a clamp and, you know, these are a clamp on. So you don't have to modify the frame, no drilling any holes and nothing of that nature. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward, easy installation. Uh, on the headlight, you'll notice, you know, the GTV headlight, of course, is on the fender. Uh, we've got the decorative visor. There's two versions of that. I believe the part number on this one is GTS visor. Uh, or maybe this is actually, sorry, this is the LX visor because it's smaller diameter. So this is either LX visor or LX rim, one of those two. But there's two versions. There's one with the actual brow, and then this one is the one without the brow. One thing you'll notice on this bike that uh, you don't see too commonly, especially on the GTVs, is this beautiful front uh, fender guard. The part number on this one is GT15P. So this is what we describe as the premium fender guard. Notice these ugly front uh, reflectors have been removed and replaced with the uh, painted R plugs. Uh, this is another exclusive we offer. You know, these things uh, break all the time and or just look absolutely horrible. So we actually uh, sell uh, a set of eight plugs that are painted to match. But getting back to the bar, uh, I said this is not too commonly seen on a GTV because of the way the uh, headlight bracket fits. Uh, you, need to do, you need to do some modification in order to fit this bar to the GTV. So Robot did that, so he's going to tell us what we did. Uh, pr pretty simple modification. I mean, you can see this bar actually goes all the way up to and catches one of the three fasteners that hold the fender to the, um, the fork itself. Well, that works great on a GTS or the uh, 300 Super that this normally would fit on. Uh, with the GTV though, they have a metal plate that actually catches those three fasteners and goes out front and catches the four fasteners that hold the headlight bucket. It kind of stabilizes the headlight. Uh, fortunately, you can cut this down about yay right there and drill one single hole right in the middle and it will catch one of the four fasteners, the actual, I think it's the front, front right fastener right here. So you basically best thing to do is pull out the wheel, pull the front wheel off, and you can kind of visualize where this will catch. And you also need to make a couple little bends to this to make it work, but pretty, pretty simple modification to make this accessory work on a GTV here. Yeah, we definitely prefer that one to the uh, GTS 15 PA, just because that third mounting point makes it so the front fender guard mounts extremely securely. Um, and then panning down here, you'll notice a final chrome uh, item that we offer is an exclusive with Scooter West. This is another brand new one. But basically we've gone so far as to replace, you know, the wheel hardware uh, with a special set of chrome fasteners. What can you tell us, you know, about these, Robot? Uh, there's, the kit comes with five, five wheel fasteners. If you wanted to change the rears, you could do the same. Uh, basically install the fasteners, torque them to uh, 16 foot-pounds. I reuse the washers. You don't really see the zinc plated washers back there. Um, they include these little buttons that pop into the actual hex heads, so it kind of gives them a real nice decorative chrome look to them. And we also offer a kit that replaces the two um, fasteners that retain the uh, front caliper here. And you see pretty much the same, same kind of fasteners with the two buttons right here. Uh, lastly, we replace the, um, the, the black fastener that holds this little shock fork cover thing that's on these bikes. And a final note on these chrome fasteners, all these chrome fasteners, this is all uh, American made stuff. I mean, obviously it's metric, you know, all the mounting hardware on the Vespas is metric, but finding quality chrome fasteners is not as easy as you might think. Um, so Robot has kind of searched the seven seas and we basically bought in bulk all the chrome fasteners and we put together our own kits. So it's high quality, like American made, you know, chrome fasteners as well as special chrome caps. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for the bolt-on standard chrome stuff. All right, we've got a few more accessories that we installed that are bolt-on ones, uh, but they don't really fall in the category of chrome accessories, so we're going to talk about those now. First off, you'll notice it's got a good size, uh, a nice mid-size windshield. This one is made by an Italian company called Biondi. The part number on this one is GTV18BI. This company, like I said, Italian, they've gone into liquidation, which is essentially a semi-state of bankruptcy. Uh, sorry for them, sorry for us, sorry for you, but it basically means availability is going to be a little touchy on this thing probably for the next six months. Um, but this is actually a nice mid-size windshield. 
Robot's got the original one there. Um, so this one measures, I don't know, about like, you know, 17 inches in total length. The original one is maybe a mere like six. Mid-size windshields tend to be the most popular. So this is another one that's available. This is GTV 18. Uh, you can kind of see side by side, you know, there's basically, what is that one? I don't know, that one's about two and a half inches shorter than the uh, Beyondy one. Uh, but this has always been traditionally a very good selling windshield. Again, that part number is GTV 18. Uh, what else we got on this one, Robot? Can you tell us about those grips? Have the, the brown grips, uh, pretty simple install. Um, we also sell the, the grip glue to install these. Correct. The part number on the grips is 277-1452-BR. That's an exclusive thing that we actually had developed by a, an Italian rubber manufacturer. Uh, so that's those brown grips you won't really find anywhere other than Scooter West. What else? You have the Scooter West exclusive uh, color matched, um, whatever you call those, the knee pad covers, kind of glove box upper covers. And this one is the version with the power plug on it. So you can plug your GPS or cell phone charger into it. Part number on that one, GTS PP-BR. Uh, those come in the brown to match the trim package on the GTV. We've also got a black one. You know, there's a, a gray pair, there's a sand pair, and there's also like a tan pair. So several different options to choose from. We have the floor mat. This is a uh, exclu exclusive product. It's patterned after the original Vespa one, but in a brown color that closely matches the seat and the knee pads. Um, and Steve can go in about the, the seat. That's a Piaggio factory seat there. Yeah, you'll notice this is a factory accessory seat that Piaggio offers. You know, the GTV has that very distinct, you know, twin seat, twin seat configuration where there's the front kind of tractor portion and there's a separate, you know, pad for the passenger. For a lot of taller riders, that doesn't make for a very comfortable, like, riding position. So Vespa very cleverly came up with a bench seat, which is more like the Super or GTS style of seat. However, it's got the exact same leather that comes standard on the GTV seat. So this cool bench seat will allow the driver to slide forward or scooch a little further back. And it, of course, matches, you know, to a T, the leather of the backrest pad, which is found on the color match top case from Vespa. So this is the final thing the customer has gone for is basically the 35 liter, you know, the larger top case color matched. And the last, last accessory it has on there is the white wall tires. Um, a 120, 70, 12 in the front and a 130, 70, 12 for the rear. Uh, made by Shinco. Nice, nice tire for the GTV. It matches well with this uh, ivory and the chrome on this scooter here. We do these as a pair. So if you buy the pair of the front and rear, you get a bit of a price break. Part number on the pair front and rear tires is GTS. Uh, WW set, I believe. Uh, but yeah, for the uh, price, it's a very economically priced tire, and you get the you know, added style of the white walls. Uh, pretty cool tire option. And I guess we'll actually just wing it and go into the final round of chrome stuff that uh, is definitely exclusive to this bike. Uh, this particular individual said, Hey, I want to know if you guys can chrome the belt cover, which is this cast aluminum piece here. He asked for that to be chromed as well as the center stand and even the passenger foot pegs. So the beautiful thing about being in San Diego is we've got this friendly neighbor to the south um, called Mexico. Uh, they can chrome stuff at a price that is much more affordable than you could ever imagine in the United States. So one thing we can kind of offer like through Scooter West is if you ever want anything chromed, any of these metal components, you can kind of see the chrome, the finishes like pretty much beautiful on this, wouldn't you say, Ro? But I mean, I would say it's- Yeah, it's just pretty nice. And that's a triple plated that covers, uh, they actually strip, strip it down to bare aluminum. And it's got a, uh, they have to copper plate it first, you know, cause the, the actual chrome and the nickel, well, the second coat is nickel and the last coat is the chrome. But for anything that's like an aluminum cast cover, you have to triple plate it. And that's what they did with that cover along with other, other parts that were chromed on the scooter. And yeah, it's definitely, it's not production chrome. I mean, these are like, these are hand done. Um, yeah, we haven't really done too much chrome down there in a long time, uh, but we were very, very, very impressed and pleased, not only with the price, but the actual fit and finish and final product of these, these particular items. So again, exclusive ones, that belt cover there, 
the center stand, and then the passenger foot pegs. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about the numerous electrical upgrades that uh, we've done on this particular bike. Uh, most of them are highly exclusive to Scooter West, uh, all developed by Robot here. Uh, but the most exciting one that uh, we've sold a lot of over the years, and this is the latest version of it. These are the uh, second generation of the uh, front running light and turn signal kit. But essentially it's a, it's a special switchback LED bulb. So it's a, that bright white uh, as a running light. And then when you hit the turn signals, it actually flashes like a nice bright amber. You know, on the stock bike, these are actually just turn signals. So we basically add the functionality of running light and a turn signal, and then we give it, you know, the features of the LEDs. There's two versions of this, MI200 as the part number for the first one, and MI200PP as the part number for the second one. Uh, the PP actually has a secondary uh, alarm connector built into the circuit board. But basically these are a plug and play. So you'll tie into the uh, factory alarm connector that's located behind this cover panel here. Uh, and it basically plugs in, plugs in in about five minutes worth of total installation time. And this customer opted for the PP version, which has the secondary power plug splitter, basically so he can you know, power two electrical devices at any time. So he's basically got, you know, the uh, power plug built into the knee pad there. So that's all self-contained within that uh, one LED kit that uh, Robot has developed. Uh, you also notice we basically got the matching uh, LED bulb behind the, in the horn light there, and also down in the headlight. The part number on that is 12V194-LED. On a GTV, you can go so far as to purchase three of those because you'll replace one in the taillight as well. Uh, another thing that's super cool on this bike is it does have uh, our HID kit fitted. The part number on that is HID. Um, we commonly don't really say that it fits the GTV, but with Robot's resourcefulness, he's taken our stock HID kit and done a couple little tricks to get it installed. What can you tell us about the installation on that, Robot? Well, with our latest uh, HID kit, the ballast is, is quite small. You know, it's a little box that's inch and a half by two inches and maybe a little more than a half inch thick. Uh, fortunately, it allows you to mount it to the actual fork tube because there's not enough room to put it inside this bucket. And underneath this, there's a plate that actually hold, holds this uh, headlight bucket. And there's a plastic cover that's retained by three screws. You could pull that plastic cover off, uh, install the bulb as we demonstrate in the other video for installing the HID kit on other, you know, the S or the GTS. And then the only difference is the ballast is actually hose clamped to the, uh, the black um, steel fork tube. And it's, I would say it's mounted maybe two thirds or three quarters of the way up. Um, and you definitely wanna make sure it's secured well so it doesn't get in the way of the tire or the brakes. Um, pretty easy install. And HID takes about you know, 30 seconds to warm up the full brightness. Uh, it's a single filament or they, it, all the HID kits are essentially one arc lamp, but some of them would move the bulb for high and low. We found those, those style uh, bulbs are unreliable. The best ones to go with are the single, the single uh, beam ones, and they work, work just fine. Um, so right now it's wired to the, the high beam, low beam switch as demonstrated in the GTS install. You know, I think it's the red wire uh, ties to the purple wire. So the HID light, if you have this in low beam, is actually off. So you can just run or drive around with the running lights. And if you put it to high, then the HID headlight comes on. And again, so that's just our standard HID kit. Uh, Pretty much no, no additional parts. It just takes a little bit more technical know-how. On a scale one to five, I would say it's a number three. Not horribly difficult, but takes a little bit of ingenuity to install it. So. Got it. So continuing on to some of the additional electrical stuff. Um, that's right. That's the Stebel air horn. Uh, that's always been a super popular item. The part number on that is uh, horn dash Stebel. Um, and then there's a secondary wiring kit that we offer that makes it so you can, you know, unplug, plug and play this horn, tie it into the battery. So there's virtually little to no modifications. Uh, what can you say about the horn install on the GTV that's different than on the 250 or the GTS or the Super, because we do have the video of the install 
you know, on the 250 and 300, but not the GTV version. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. The only thing with the GTV is they have this uh, bracket that comes off from up here that actually holds four of the connectors. And those four connectors are for the, the two switches and then the two connectors actually go to the speedometer. And it just, basically you can disconnect all those connections and pull the handlebars off and, or the, the switch running gear. It's a little different than on the GTS. Uh, pretty much you need to remove that bracket and route the wiring down to the front about, I would say this location and zip tie the connectors and secure them. And then you can mount the horn right in this pocket much like you would install it on a 300 Super or GTS. So in layman's terms, what you're saying, because different handlebar configuration, there's more wiring and such in the built actual into the leg, shield, leg shield, so there's yeah. a little bit more to work around, basically, mm -hmm. right? But it's still very possible. Yeah, it's still pretty simple install. You know, I would say that's probably a number four, you know, uh, one through five. It's, it's a little difficult, but, you know, again, it takes a little, little bit of uh, ingenuity to move those connectors and secure them. So. And then pan into the back of the scooter, you'll notice we've basically got either the top case light kit, uh, we've got the running light, and we've also in installed LED bulbs in the brake light. Uh, first thing is the top case light kit. The part number on that is MI97. Uh, this is made by Admore Lighting, a, Canada, a company up in Canada. We're one of their uh, only US distributors of this particular product, but they've basically developed this. It's got the brake modulator built into it, so you hit the brake lever and it pulsates like that automatically. And then of course too, they've gone so far as to add like a amber, you know, switchback style of turn signal. So when you hit the turn signal, the, the top case lights actually illuminate amber. This too, pretty simple, straightforward install. Uh, you basically, it comes with all the wiring you need to retrofit these LED strips behind these lenses. There's a quick connect you know, on the base of the top case there. And then essentially there's a little wiring loom that runs down and ties in, I believe on the right side of the scooter, right, Robot? Yeah, co commonly we'll just route the wiring. They'll take the plastic plate, plate off that, um, you know, remove this with the four screws and you can see the, the wiring actually routes through one of these grills here, will pass right through. You don't even need to do any modification. And then we have the wiring go around and the fuel tank on these, these bikes actually kind of fills in the two voids on both cowls and you'll run the wiring in front of the fuel tank and come back to about, about right here. And this is where the wiring that goes to your turn signals and taillights and you'll tap into the wiring just about right here and secure it with the clips that are built into the frame. We've got an installation video on that and that kit does come with pretty detailed instructions and everything you need, including the little quick connects to tie into the electrical system there. So there's no cutting or hacking up with the wiring. Uh, notice too, we've got the uh, running lights that we've added to the rear turn signals. Normally when the bike is running, uh, you don't see anything here until you get the turn signals. Uh, we've got uh, a red running light kit that is a plug and play. Uh, part number on that is MI97-REAR, so MI97-REAR. But essentially you add, you know, a red running light bulb to each of the turn signals. That's what you're seeing there. Um, adds a considerable amount of safety and visibility. You also notice we had the turn signals going earlier. What can you tell us about the turn signal kit? Right uh, it's got the LED uh, turn signal kit. Um, these are a bulb that's uh, kind of a, a more of a, a light yellow tone versus the amber incandescent bulbs. They're quite amber and these are much brighter and kind of have a yellow, yellow appearance to it. But you notice the, the tone matches quite well to the fronts now. You know, we've gone so far as the source bulbs that kind of work well with each other. So we've got that going on. Uh, the LED, we have the LED running light and the license light in the actual tail light. You can kind of see it's that, that cool white. And also we have the, the LED brake light and that's a 12V920-LED RD, I think it is, or red. Yeah, the, on the, the red, Bulb for the brake light is a 12V920RD-LED. And then the uh, secondary, like the, the running light you see in there is a 12V194-LED. So that's actually a white one. But behind the, uh, behind the uh, red lens, it obviously illuminates red. Um, I think that's about it for the electrical, the electrical accessories, you know, the bolt-on chrome stuff, the custom chrome stuff, and some of the other cosmetic stuff that's been installed to this bike. but a pretty custom machine to say the least.